hello everyone today we are going to discuss about uh, shielding and uh, we will try to answer what is shielding and uh, why do we need shielding of signals and in what context when do we have to shield a particular signal first is what is shielding to keep it simple shielding is a simple concept to protect certain signals from changing their characteristics for example let's say i have a signal okay let's say it is a voltage signal and let's say this is 5 volt signal and this 5 volts can be going to different blocks in a chip it can go to so many blocks and I want to make sure that this 5 volts is stable meaning that I do not want the value of 5 volts to change or even I do not want any kind of glitches on the signal so in order to protect the deviation of the signal by protecting it against certain aggressors is called a shielding so it is in simple terms uh, it is a simple way to shield or protect a signal from deviation and to make it stable and next is why we have to shield the answer to this is almost similar to what i told in here to keep the signal stable we have to shield the signals for example let's say let me take the same example if this is a 5 volt signal going to so many different places in a chip okay in reality if you look at the metals uh, look at the real vlsi chip the signal is being carried out by actual metals okay so let's say uh, i have a very critical signal coming out from the bgr that is band gap preference which has a 5 volts value and beside this uh, metal i have another metal okay let's say if this is running in m1 metal m1 and if this also is running in m1 and uh, this also is going running in m1 metal but let's say this is not a, a constant signal like uh, the bgr voltage let's say it is some kind of a clock signal like this so what happens is usually because they are in the same uh, layer that is this is m1 and this is also m1 and if they are kept very close by if they are very close by to each other they can actually create capacitors in between because uh, what is there in between any two metals is always uh, insulated and so this space which is here this space is completely silicon dioxide so we have metals and in between we have insulators so it gives rise to capacitors so you can just imagine what could happen to the signal on the bgr the metal which is carrying the bgr signal which is 5 volts can be easily affected by this uh, signal which is uh, like a clock kind of signal on the this metal the second metal so many things can happen to uh, the bgr voltage uh, let us see what what are the different cases uh, now before that uh, this is just one example at uh, example how the signal can be affected the other methods can also be uh, uh, if i have a signal uh, other can be like this if i have a metal and uh, i can have the aggressor or another this is my stable signal 
and there can be aggressors on both sides also so let's say if this is in m1 and uh, okay this is in m12 and this is in m1 also and this this is my let's say bgr voltage so this we call it as aggressors they are aggressors and this becomes my victim similar uh, cases can happen between metals of different layer for example let's say this is my signal in which is the victim and if this is in m1 the coupling can also happen on top also on top of this let's say exactly on top of this i may not be able to show it uh, properly here so if let's say there is a metal on top of this and let's say that metal is m2 now coupling if you look at uh, if you look from this side the metal m2 will be on top and uh, metal m1 will be on bottom even here uh, there are capacitors which are created so these are the different cases where uh, coupling can happen from the aggressor by aggressor i mean the signal which is uh, going up and down something like a clock like this and victim is a signal where we have we want it to be stable or we do not want the characteristics of that signal to change so these are the different scenario where it can happen so what we have to do is we have to shield these signals uh, the actually the metals now because the metals are carrying the signals against all these aggressors so this process itself is uh, called a shielding so the the meaning of shield also comes from that term we are shielding it we are it uh, we are using some kind of shield for the for the victim against all this aggressors so how do we do it now before that uh, i would also want to discuss what can happen to stable signals uh, for that uh, i will always consider this as my aggressors and let's say this is my victim so whenever i say aggressor remember it is actually a metal and uh, which is very nearby to the victim and this is also a signal in a metal and they are very close by and if they are close by i am assuming that there is some kind of uh, coupling capacitor between them okay now if the aggressor is having clock kind of signal here and if this is a stable signal what can happen so let us just now talk in terms of signals so that we have a stable signal and we have an aggressor going here like this what can happen to the signals so you can just imagine there is a coupling gap so there is always a chance that uh, the signal will couple to they can couple to each other correct and because this victim is stable let's say it is a constant voltage signal like this like this one it it has it will not do any kind of coupling but this signal is aggressor it is going up like this for example here it's going up so during this time here you can see a glitch in the signal and when it is coming down somewhere here it can give a glitch like this so there can be glitches everywhere wherever the signal goes up and down on the bgr signal or stable signal so it's some kind of uh, it induces some kind of uh, noise and another thing which can happen is this deviation can be large you know this deviation which i'm talking about can be really very large and it can affect the operating of certain devices to which this voltage is connected to so, so there can be so many problems which can happen due to aggressors mm. and uh, second thing which we have to know is 
the victim will not always be a stable signal the victim can let's say we want victim can be let's say a clock itself okay and the aggressor can also be a clock so this is our aggressor and this is our victim they can be clock signal in this case also let's say this is a signal which i want uh, this is a signal which i want it to protect against all deviations so here also coupling can happen what can happen between these two here also this is in some metal and this is also in some metal and there is a capacitance between them so there is some kind of effect uh, effects between the aggressor and victim so in this scenario what can happen is they can delay each other for example this is a signal like this the victim can get delayed because of the uh, i'm sorry the victim can delay like this it is delayed okay so there is some kind of delay which you can observe in the victim so the delay each other so this is also some kind of problem so in circuits where the clock uh, clock frequency or the active edges and the timing at which the edges occur is very important this can become a serious problem third thing is if you have clock signals and which are going opposite to each other for example this is my this is my clock or uh, let's say this is my aggressor and if the victim is exactly you know opposite to that it is going taking opposite swing like this usually in this case uh, we do not actually do any kind of shielding because when it is going downwards it is going upwards so the, totally the effect of coupling cancel each other so this will only happen if they are exactly aligned meaning that the rising and falling edge are exactly at the same time so the coupling action will cancel so in this case we don't have to do any kind of shielding so to quickly revise what we have seen the first case is we have to do shielding if the signal uh, aggressor is a very stable signal like this one and if the victim uh, sorry if the aggressor is a clock signal so there can be noise and uh, that can be creating problem In the second case is when we have different clock signals of let's say different frequencies they can delay each other and the victim signal can be delayed and third is a case where they are exactly uh, symmetric and they are actually having reverse charging and discharging times so in this case we don't have to do the shielding because the coupling action will cancel each other okay now how to avoid the shielding we have now we now know what is shielding and how does it happen uh, how to protect uh, the uh, the victims from aggressor so this is uh, the protection of the signal or shielding of signal is uh, a simple application of sinking uh, the effect of aggressor to ground or vdd for example let's say this is a metal m1 okay and this is my victim okay. so what i do is in order to protect this metal from weak other aggressors i actually shield it from sides like this for example this is also m1 and on other side also i place another metal of m1 and these metals they are either connected to vdd or you can also connect it to vss 
so it depends on the context why when we have to connect to vdd and when we have to connect to vss is another story which we'll discuss very shortly so as of now we will consider that uh, we are connecting these two metals uh, to either vdd or vss so what can happen is let's say if there is an aggressor somehow let's say there is aggressor here and there is some kind of coupling which will happen it will not directly see the victim the victim is somewhere in the middle here so the coupling or any aggressor which is sitting here the noise or whatever will couple to these metals and because these metals are connected to vdd and vss the signals will couple and go to the power supplies we will see the different kind of shieldings and how it is done in actual layout in the next videos thank you